massive one. Makes one man miss. Makes another man miss and scores! That's the goal of the day so far. Undenied! Wow. How does that not go in? Michael Leo, Sports Center, top ten. Now they're just showing off, Q. And we welcome you to the top matchup of the weekend from South Bend, Indiana. It is number one Notre Dame and number three Syracuse set to meet here today in the ACC opener from Arlotta Stadium. Final Saturday in March. Welcome everyone. Mike Corey alongside Quint Kesnick. Great to be with you here today. All right, Q, you got two of the best teams in the nation here. Where do you start with this one? Start with Notre Dame right now, the number one team in the country. I watched them play two weeks ago against Michigan. In the middle of the game was the best lacrosse I've seen all season. And then you got Syracuse, 9-2. and two. They're two goals away from being undefeated. The Orange are back. They're scoring goals. They're playing defense. They're winning faceoffs. All right, well, starting with the Irish, what do you do? How do you defend this guy? Pat Cavanaugh, what a season again he's having for Notre Dame. Well, in this series, in five games, he's got 43 points. He's been the orange juicer, juicer, and those are all Irish wins. Okay, he's an elite competitor. He's a pass-first guy who can shoot it. He hustles, always hustles. He'll ride, he'll scrap for ground balls. He brings the energy. There's the production. I've never seen anything like it. Those are all games. Notre Dame against Syracuse, and he is averaging more than eight points per game. It's a big reason why Notre Dame's won the last six in this series. What about for Syracuse on the other side? A more balanced team this year, the defense is better. Yeah, they're winning the middle of the field, but they're close defense. They're making good uh, slides. They're much more buttoned up in terms of their team defense, and their goalie, Will Mark, has been sensational. They keep teams out of the middle and force weak angled shots. They're also winning faceoffs. All of it has combined. Syracuse now giving up about four goals less per game than they did last season. You look at the difference in the faceoff numbers from a year ago. They're plus 20% in that department. And what that's done, it's allowed them to play less possessions on defense. They've been fresh late in a lot of close games, and that's helped out Gary Gate and his crew. And the opening faceoff is going to be won by Notre Dame by Will Lynch. And we're underway here today, number one versus number three. Well, you see it and talked about it for Notre Dame, their first game in two weeks when they defeated Michigan by 10 back on March 16th. And for Syracuse, I mean, Quinn, we had talked earlier about this. I mean, they got 11 games already under their belt. They haven't been at home, though. There's a stretch where they're not going to be at home between March 20th and April 20th. Here's Notre Dame. Chris Kavanaugh. Trying to work it into the middle. And it's going over to the orange. Looks like Syracuse... Uh they put Riley Figueres on Pat Kavanaugh. They're polling Faison, and Billy Dwan III is covering Chris Kavanaugh. It's always interesting when you match up uh, against Notre Dame where you put your poll. Do you put him on Dobson? Do you put him on, on Faison? And how do you cover Jake Taylor? So far, looks like Syracuse covered Taylor with a shorty. They'll probably be slow to slide. Goalkeeper for Syracuse today is Will Mark, and for Notre Dame, Liam Entman. The Fighting Irish here in number one versus number three today. Bouncer on the way. Off the mark, going to be backed up by the Orange here, putting it back in. Joey Spolina. Two top five goalies in the country. Mm -hmm. Both tall, both super experienced. Notre Dame is only allowing 8.33 goals per game. That's the lowest in the nation. They've only played six games, so 50 total goals so far in the season throughout the first six. Behind the back, count it, and Syracuse with Finn Thompson on the board first. Pretty play. You attack this Irish defense from behind the net with cuts and crease movement. And this is just great energy by Thompson. He loops all the way around the crease. The defender is trailing him and loses leverage. 
and to increase his angle, he flips that over his shoulder. You lay with the assist. Thompson, who had been in the shooting slump early in the season, with a great start for Syracuse. 12th goal of the campaign and gets the orange on the board first here. In violation in Syracuse and Notre Dame possession here early on. Another great crowd at Orlana Stadium. First conference game of the season here today between these two. You better be ready defensively when, when Notre Dame carries the ball into the zone. Their, their early offense has been lethal this season, whether it's Ben Ramsey, 24. That was Carter Parlett, 21. We go back to that phases. last game. No, they do. In the Michigan game, they were tied at three. Then they go on a 7 nothing run and just put that game away. No trouble in a 19-9 win two weeks ago. Pat Kavanaugh. Fires away wide to the left. Man-to-man -man defense from Syracuse, but they were super packed in. I mean, their splits, it almost looked like a zone the way they packed it in. This is the second midfield for Notre Dame. It's been a productive group. It's Riley Gray, and you called it Quint as he scores to tie the game. This is an area of differentiation, I believe, for Notre Dame, and it'll show up in the ACC championship game in early May, and then maybe again in championship weekend. But to be able to go two midfields deep with guys who can get to the rack, Riley Gray last year, I believe, had 16 goals. A certain calmness, he's a grad student, good size, 6'4", 220. He'll run with Bryce Walker and Will Angrick. And in talking to Kevin Corgan, Notre Dame head coach, he said, during their bye week last week, they worked on getting a third midfield unit. I mean, I can't even imagine. That's like, oh, so old school. That's like 1960s lacrosse using three midfields. Hey, they're so deep. Gray with just his fourth goal of the season, though, and it's now tied at one here. Not a great start for Mason Cohn and John Mullen, the Fogos for Syracuse. Two violations already and one loss. Yeah, one more 30 second. Extra yeah, and man. that's a big deal, Mike. Oh, you yeah. better be careful. You better be careful. They're going to call uh, Notre Dame for goalie interference. The, the Kavanaugh's, they're hijackers. They are bandits around the cage. You've got to be really, really careful with the ball and clear with the sense of urgency. They don't take a second off. 50 and 51 for Notre Dame and White. You're absolutely right. And what kind of pace do you think we're going to see here? in this one today with these guys. Well, I, I get the feeling that Notre Dame can play at any pace, but they like to play fast. Well, and depending, how face, yeah, de depending on how face-offs go, I would think Syracuse would want to play a little slow. Here, he, uh, Will Mark's got that clamped, and that's going to be goalie interference. But again, the point is that those guys are hovering, and they're hustling. They're not chilling out and allowing you to scoop the ball as a goaltender. They're, they're making your life miserable. Yeah, the focus has got to really be on what Syracuse does defensively, especially like you said against the Kavanaugh's because Notre Dame's averaging 17 goals a season or a game, excuse me, this season. Takeaway here by the Irish. Chris Conlon's got it. Good trail check and a nice clear. You know, the, the blueprint to beat Notre Dame was laid out and printed by Kevin Warren and Georgetown. Long possessions. Win face off, be really possession. Wear down the Notre Dame defense. Uh, they did that. It has not been duplicated since then. Just over four minutes gone by here in the first quarter. Chris Kavanaugh swings it over for Eric Dobson. Good matchup for Dobson. Gets a step, takes it right in, shoots, and the save made by Will Mark. Big time stop by Mark. 6'4", 220. He's a bit of a flopper. At that time, he guessed right, and he went down. Dobson had a incredible size advantage in that matchup, and that was way too easy for him. Sam English for Syracuse. Checked by Nick Harris. The 
That's what you're talking about, right? Is on Hilt. Settled. Light is on Spillina. Conlin is on this matchup with Muley. Syracuse is going to have to score unassisted goals today. Notre Dame will be slow to double team. Bardock's away. And it's going to be picked they got, out by Edson. And Mike, that time they got there with the double. It's a nice wing dodge by the Orange. A little bit of hesitation, and next thing you know, the window shuts in your face. You're getting pinched double team, the ball's in the carpet, and Liam Entman is there for the bailout. Gray brings it over for Notre Dame. Incredible crowd on the far side in the grassy knoll. Notre Dame has caught some breaks. All their Saturday home games this year, the weather has been spectacular, and they have packed the fans in at Arlotta. Well, you were talking about it last game, Q, about the community involvement and what the Irish have done in this town. It's, it's been pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a nice mix, Mike, of, of students and then kids, you know, local players from, from, from Indiana. They got athletes from other sports showing up. Obviously, the parents and friends. Next thing you know, there's four or 5,000 fans at these games. Bouncer by Pat Kavanaugh goes out. I mean, look at that. That's that's yes, that's, that's a thing awesome. of beauty. Thing of beauty. Look at that. They're in the all green last uh, time they played. The St. Patrick's Day is the day before. It was on March 16th. And the bye week. Riley Gray. Tennis shoot. And Sandwich puts it in, and it is good. Gray scores again, and Notre Dame has the lead. We sat down with Coach Corrigan two days ago, and it looked chilly in Notre Dame because he took the, he took our Zoom call at home in front of a fireplace. But he talked about during their bye week how the second midfield was a point of emphasis. And here is Riley Gray with two unassisted goals, both on wing dodges, and that ball does entirely cross the goal line. This is close, but right there it's underneath and in, and then it kicks out. The entire lacrosse ball must cross the entire goal line. They may look at this. They're gonna they're gonna look at this in video review. I think the goal will stand. Well, they'll take a look at it and we'll step aside. We'll be right back. For the time being, it's two to one, Notre Dame. Corey Quint Kastnick, they were just taking a look at the last goal scored by Riley Gray Q. Yeah, and the, the officials take a look at this during the break, which I like because this is awful close. Watch the ball bounce and, and, and then come up underneath the post. It hits the net on the on the, on the the way back down. Now, the fact that it hits the net is no indication whether it's a goal or not. Sometimes those, those nets will actually hang out onto the field of play. But I believe this replay will confirm that the entire ball right here crosses the goal line and then lands. So I, I like the fact that they I like the fact that they looked at that. You know, there have been some cases in February, Mike, I thought that, that uh, video review was a little frivolous. That was that was that was needed and, and they got it right. Uh, yes, especially when it's number one versus number three. You're absolutely right. And the goal counts and Notre Dame with a two to one lead. And to your point about the second midfield there and Riley Gray, who's on that unit, has already scored two goals for the fighting Irish here seven minutes in. The face-off story may be the strongest uh, storyline so far, though. Notre Dame is dominating in that department. Yeah. Syracuse already has two violations. And already nine shots offensively here for the Irish, too. Face on. And quickly, the orange and the clear, here they come. Carter Rice. Nice recovery defensively in transition, but how about that defense by the orange? They get the double team to phase on. They make him a passer. The second slide comes from the goal line extended upfield with a stick and with a disruptive stick, and they create a, a, a turnover. I, I believe it was Figueres. English. Orange tracking it down here with Finn Thompson, who scored the first goal of the game here today. Hiltz, Owen Hiltz, knocked out of his stick. 
Got it back. Defended that time from Ben Ramsey. Yeah, that, the one issue you got with the Syracuse attack is that they're not really Dodgers. Spillina's Spillin got a match up here. Harris is on him. Spillina trying to dump it in front. We welcome you into the game of the weekend here with number one, Notre Dame, number three, Syracuse, Arlotta Stadium. And just like that, Ben Ramsey fires it through for the Irish. They now go up three to one with 6.04 to play in this first quarter. Uh, the storyline so far this game, Notre Dame has been dominating the faceoff. Second midfielder, Riley Gray, has two unassisted goals. And I mentioned this early offense. Ben Ramsey's a defensive midfielder with the green light to go. And he's just given a little too much space, a re-dodge right-handed. He actually hits a knee and is falling to the turf and beats Mark from mid-range. So a transition goal, Ben Ramsey for the three to one lead. Well, you said it, Quinn. Four to nothing at the face-offs for Notre Dame. Already two violations for Syracuse as well here. And it's gonna continue in the favor of the Irish. Now five nothing. They win the face-off. They've had goals by Riley Gray, two of them, and then Ramsey, who you just saw. Finn Thompson had the first goal of the game for Syracuse to get the scoring started, but it's three in a row here by Notre Dame, and they have possession. Yeah, issues. Time of possession is a major issue right now for the Orange. Coming in nine and two, two one-goal losses in overtime to Army and Maryland. Nice wins over Duke and Johns Hopkins. The Orange are back and surging. But this Notre Dame team, if you watch their game against Michigan two weeks ago, it's the best lacrosse I've seen anyone play in the country this year. Pat Cavada. The passing of this offense to me stands out. Everybody's a star in their own role. They've been very unselfish. Well, they play together for a while, too. You know each other. Obviously, the Cavanaugh's here with Chris Cavanaugh now. The ball gets kicked around. It's a nice D. We're going to have a shot clock issue here. Woo! Orange the other way. And almost unsettled situation. They fired away. Now it's going to be Mule that's going to put it back in for You better be ready Syracuse. off this restart. That was Spolina with the behind the back to Dwan looking for his fifth goal of the season. The Orange don't get much production out of a second midfield group, but let me tell you, their poles, Sam Alexo and Billy Dwan have combined for eight goals. Their Fogo, Mason Cohn, has five goals. That's a tough start, though, the faceoff X for sure for Syracuse here. 0 for 5 to begin play. Luke Roa has it. Again, score unassisted goals if you're Syracuse or get the ball behind the net. This Notre Dame defense is going to be slow to double team. You want to take as much time as you can, too. And as you said earlier, Q, about kind of trying to slow down this Notre Dame team, make them work defensively, but you got to keep it close. Where are the matchups that Syracuse can win? And Liam Entenham kind of points to himself as if to say, I should have had that, because Jackson Burt whistle shot was through a screen. Burt whistle with his 11th goal of the season. Orange are within one. Watch the interference come in front of the goalie's face as this ball is released. He just never got a good view of it. Right there, you lay two flashes right in front. Just enough that the ball goes between Muley and the goaltender. And, and just like hockey, when you lose sight of it for a moment, he kind of knew it was low and knew it was going to his right, but he couldn't cleanly track it. Burt Whistle is a lethal shooter. Cohen finally wins the faceoff here for Syracuse. First of the day with 3.45 to go in the first quarter. That's big as they have it back and a chance to tie here. Yeah, there's no panic. Gary Gaden and his staff. This team is battle tested. As I said, nine and two. They played just some really, really tight and tense games, losing to Maryland in the dome, losing to Army, beating Johns Hopkins in Charlotte. 
They've seen it all, two, and it's not even yeah, the end of March. A, you're right. I mean, the two losses, both overtime losses to those teams you just said, Maryland and Army, number four and number five, respectively, at the time. They've almost played double the amount of games that Notre Dame has so far this season. Nine and two, Notre Dame five and one. Under three to play in the first quarter. Bouncing on the way of that shot is Eric Dobson. Gonna be orange ball. Should be orange yes. ball. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's hard to tell about Notre Dame. I look at their all their stats and their record, and they're five and one, but they open the season with two tomato cans. So I don't even, I throw those games out and, and then analyze the numbers. Well, you got the common opponent in Maryland there, Quint, and they beat Maryland 14 to nine, and you had Syracuse fall to Maryland in overtime 13 to 12. The, Ir the Irish are, are small favorites in this game. Thought the total was grossly high. What was the total? I thought I saw 26 and a half. I, I, I'd be shocked 26. if we, we got. I, I, I'd be shocked if we got in that range. Well, we've got six so far here in Syracuse, and Thompson ties it up at three. Second for Finn Thompson today. He's only a sophomore from Toronto. Really talented hand eye coordination. Ross Bergmaster doesn't like this double team. He goes halfway. Indecision's bugging me. You go halfway, you get burnt. You're either sticking to your man or you're going and getting there. But that time, the yo yo ball handler drew Bergmaster's 27. Adam leaving a man open. It's an easy little step down and shot. That's exactly what Notre Dame does not want to do defensively. And that is the third faceoff violation for Syracuse here in this first quarter. So that's going to result in a 30 second extra man opportunity here for Notre Dame. This group's been lethal this year, 14 of 17. No better group in the country. 78%, I believe. And let's see how Syracuse chooses to play this up. You know, Jake Taylor's your tough decision on the inside. What do you do with 13 and one? 14 extra man goals this season for Notre Dame. They're shutting off. Two minutes top. to play in the first. They're pressing out. Top side of your screen. A little tic-tac-toe there, back over to Kavanaugh, up top. Rocket shot, Dobson counted. Eric Dobson, and the man up, and Notre Dame leads at 4-3. Each guy is a star in their own role on this group. It's, it's the as strong an extra man unit as I've ever seen. That makes them 15 for 18 on the season. Syracuse uses their junkyard dogs. It's, it's a group of five that they bring off the bench. All are backup defenders or midfielders. They've done a nice job killing off penalties, but again, pick your poison. You want the Kavanaugh's to beat you? You want Taylor to beat you? Oh, you're gonna pack it in? Dobson all day long from distance. Well, it was Chris Kavanaugh that had the assist. Uh, they beat you one way or the other. By their scoring or assisting, it's been a phenomenal combination. Four to three. So you can't foul. So two goals. You cannot, you cannot foul this team. That, that's a ridiculous percentage, as you said, Quint. 15 of 18 so far. 15 of 18. I've never seen anything even yeah. close to that, Mike. That's crazy. No. And that's through just over six games. And it's the same set that everybody knows is coming. Everyone that prepares for it. And yet they're 15 of 18. And spinning it around and getting it in front. It's going to be Pat Cavanaugh. He puts it through. They can take a punch. They are, they've just been relentless this year on the offensive side of, of the ball. There's, there's no coast. There's no coasting speed. There's been very few shortages or droughts. Figueroa struggles with this pick right there. Nice job by Kavanaugh to change speeds right before he got to the pick. I think Figueroa wanted to switch. Look, he looks back at his mate there like, I thought we were going to switch. They didn't. And that's just all you need. So. Uh, uh, Great utilization of the pick behind the net by Pat Kavanaugh. 
Well, you said it, relentless. 39 seconds in between goals here, and Will Lynch got sandwiched there for Notre Dame in the faceoff. He's going to come up with it anyhow. Eight to one now, faceoffs in favor of Notre Dame. And we are under a minute to go in the first. And all of a sudden, this game's got a, a high scoring feel to it. Right. Well, I think it comes down to if Notre Dame wins faceoffs, they're going to set a fast pace. If Syracuse can win some faceoffs, I think they're going to slow this game down. Oh, right, right now, the, almost right that's now the orange defense is reeling. Devin McLean. They are. Let's see if the Irish can tack on another. We were tied at three. Two in a row from Dobson and Pat Cavanaugh. 13 seconds to go in the first. Dobson again. Pat Cavanaugh. Eight to go. Cavanaugh rolls back, shoots, he scores with three seconds to go in the first quarter. That's a backbreaker. He's owned the orange. I asked Ryan Wellner, Irish assistant coach, he said, what's the temperature of the Kavanaugh brothers this week? He said, scorching. Left-handed, off the post, a high release to a low location. Watch this shot, this is a thing of beauty. And then he stares down the orange bench as if to say, hey, did you forget about me? I average eight points per game against you guys. It's out of control. Two goals in a minute and three seconds. 95 for his career. He's just the third player in program history to reach the 200 point milestone. And what a way to end the first quarter for Notre Dame with three in a row to take a 6 3 lead to the second. It is number one versus number three here today. We were tied at three. But now it's the Irish with a three goal lead, second quarter when we return. Seventh game of the season. Let's see how the second and, quarter gets yeah, underway. And now the challenge for Mason Cohn, as, as he easily wins that, is to take a deep breath and say, you know what matters? The next faceoff matters. And you'll find out what he's made of here, emotionally and mentally. Again, faceoff and goaltenders need to have short memories speaking of goaltenders we got will mark and cage for syracuse he's already got four saves on the day but has let six go through liam entman for notre dame has yet to make a save and obviously three goals on the board here for the orange now a nice feed in front they were looking that time for burt whistle can get it though it's recovered and put on that time by luke roa and what a race after it here let's see who's got possession stays with syracuse Putting a short stick on Hiltz and attackman. Hiltz is not a dodger, he's a feeder. There it is, first save for Entenmann here today for Notre Dame. And the challenge with, with Syracuse is going to be to, to generate slides. It, it's an offense that's extremely, extremely gifted in terms of stick handling, creativity, passing, shooting. They don't have, they do not have explosive dodgers. Well, they, they were able to generate it on the last goal, right? Q with Finn Thompson. And he got freed up. And now they come through and they score here on this one. That's a great job there by Luke Roa. It's kind of to a two-goal game. This is a, a really horrendous turnover by Notre Dame in the middle of the field. And then maybe to add to that, what's worse is the lack of urgency off the turnover. So ball goes down. Change up. You got to make decisions right now to get back into the hole and check up. Rowe does a good job. Pump and go. Watch how patient he is. With a little twister at the end. Entman comes out to crush the angle right there. Leaves his feet, and he capitalizes on, on, on the goaltender being a little antsy. Great body control by Luke Rowe, the sophomore. And Notre Dame has done a really nice job though this season of taking care of the ball. They have the fewest amount of turnovers in the ACC. Third in the nation per game with just 13.5. They got five so far here today. And Syracuse getting that goal after that turnover and now they got a chance to cut it to one.
Sam English. English shoots. English leaves it hanging. He has been victimized by trail checks. 15 in orange. They get the switch here. Spolina has it. Check it. Yep, Joey Spolina. It's hit. He's got a shorty now. This is a nice matchup for, for Spolina. Ben Ramsey's on him. Spolina over the top of the net. And that's a good play. You know, you talk about Spolina and how productive he is. He doesn't have blazing speed, but he gives that up, gives a little V-cut. It's an old-school give-and-go down that right-handed alley. It's a nice look. It's a play without the ball if you're Joey Spolina. Well, he's tied for first best on the team with 24 goals coming in here today. 5 nothing shots so far for Syracuse in the second quarter. Here's one, and the save from Entenmann that time, and Finn Thompson's offering. That's two saves now for Entenmann. Yeah, Mike, I like the look. They set that pick top of the arc there, basically, and then slip it for a throwback. Everything was good except the shot location. It was a low release point to a low location, and shooting against the goalie of, of Liam's ability, that, that's just too easy. Well, Thompson's already got two goals so far today, and he called it, though, and that one not quite with what they needed. Would have been a hat trick for him here. Would have made it a one goal game. Instead, Irish now with a two goal advantage and the save by Mark. Couldn't get the cleanup though. And it's put in by Devin McLean. And Notre Dame's up seven to four. Well, this is this shows you the difference. At one end, Entom's get got has great rebound control. This time, Mark just lets that one bounce off of his cross. You got to give this a little bit of half a cradle to keep that. They used to call that the Maxwell twist based on a guy that I idolized named Mike Maxwell. You got to twist your wrist to get that ball to stay in the goalie pocket. A little half cradle. Next thing you know, the ball pops out and McLean's there. So it's back to a three goal lead here. Just over three minutes gone by in the second. And the faceoff won by Cones. He's starting to pick it up a little bit now here for the Orange. We got knocked out of his stick. Nice check by Will Donovan, 81 in white, the sophomore from Connecticut. He's a winger, he's a scrapper on these faceoffs. Again, Notre Dame has played with great pace and energy this season. I've seen very few lulls. A lot of that, Mike, has to do with their two leaders. Pat and Chris Cavanaugh. Because when your two best players play with a ferocity, everybody just gets in line and, and, and mimics them. Well, that's the way it's been here. They're trying to knock off Syracuse for the seventh consecutive time. What do you think about this series, too? You know, the way that Notre Dame's kind of owned this series here as of late. Well, Syracuse, last time they had a, a, a strong team was back in 2020, and that was the shortened season. I mean, the orange program bottomed out, and now they're making their way back. When you think about what Gary Gate from four and ten to eight and seven last year, and now they're nine and two. Pretty quick rise. As Kavanaugh got it back for Notre Dame. Dobson shoots. Pat Kavanaugh will put it back in. Dobson's That's got a major size meeting. advantage. Major size advantage of some of these uh, against some of these Syracuse defensive midfielders. Well, certainly for him, you said it, yeah, 6'5", 235 for number eight in white. They got the reset now, so there's no reason to rush. Well, That's nice defense inside. <laughs> nice defense inside. Seven turnovers now for Notre Dame. Who you want to see here with this possession? What are you looking for in this set? I'd like to see the ball behind the net. You know, if you take a page out of that Georgetown, the Hoya game plan, when they came here to South Bend and defeated Notre Dame, they had five goals that, that were initiated behind the net. You got to turn the eyes of this Notre Dame defense, make them play cutters and make them play crease defense with the ball behind. Because when you're up top and you're attacking downhill like that, you just feed into their slide packages. You feed into Liam Entenmann. I'd much rather see it you attack 
behind the front. That was a pass out of bounds to Notre Dame here as they control it with a three goal lead. You talked about that Georgetown win, the one loss in the season for Notre Dame. The Hoyas won it 11 to 10 in overtime back on February 25th. Oh, Ooh, that that post. Nice little play in that early offense. There's that phase again, Mike. I mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. They carry in, they carry in with confidence, they carry in with a green light. Like they're going to sniff out every opportunity before the defense gets set, set up. Second post shot that they've had here. And Grick here controls it now for Notre Dame. Chris Cavanaugh. Covered by Billy Dwan the third, the lefty. He's had a really strong season, 35 in orange. He covered Brennan O'Neill in the Syracuse 10-4 victory last week. And Rick shoots, he scores, and Notre Dame is up 8-4 to four now, doubling up the orange. So we talk Kavanaugh's until we're blue in the face, but you look at the midfield goals from Notre Dame today. Riley Gray's got a pair, and now Will Angrick. The power of a second midfield. Invert set. Watch how slow this double team is. Angrick just beats him. Fakes top side. No, nope, he keeps going top side, and there's no double team. He gets to a strong right hand. Will Angrick coming back from an ACL injury last season. I thought he showed flashes as a freshman. He's now a junior out of Georgetown Prep. Feels good for him. Third goal of the year. Yeah, I mean, you said it, you know, quite you're right. You can talk about Cavaliers all you want, but I mean, it's, it's not just those two. I mean, there's an unbelievable amount of talent on this team. As you said, the amount of lines they can go with. And, and now you get a timeout. They can go on. That play right there, that face-off play, I don't know if we'll show it again. Mason Cohn does a great job using his body. But watch the Kavanaugh's ride. As soon as Cohn gets this ball on this face-off, he is hunted by 50 and 51. Look, great job by Cohn, right? But all of a sudden, the pitcher changes. Look at the guys hustling from the, from the back. If you're a young player, that's all you need to see. Play like 50. Play like 51. Yes, I, I think it's all come together, and that's why you see him standing room only, man. The grassy knoll, you better have your head on a swivel back there. Yes, all around this field here today, and what a matchup we have here on this final Saturday in March. Calendar turns pretty quickly. And then you and I it's, were looking at the schedule, too, for Syracuse. Yeah. I mean, they only have three games in April. I mean, what they is play Tuesday, with Mike. Schedule? They play at Cornell Tuesday, okay, which is a very important game for the ACC and the Ivy, and it's a very difficult turnaround. After that, they have two games in the month of April. I've never seen anything like it. Now, there was some scheduling uh, mis malfunctions with Duke and Syracuse and Duke double booking. They've got some issues in the carry dome with construction, but like college lacrosse is not in a good place when teams are off on two Saturdays in April. We need games in April and May. 100%. I mean, that those are the months, April and May. It really starts kicking into high gear. I'm wondering, I wanted to see what you thought about this is another shot off the post for Notre Dame that time by Chris Cavanaugh. That's the third time they've hit the post. What do you think about these bye weeks, like, at this point oh, in the season? It's not ideal, okay? Notre Dame's coming off a bye week, and they look pretty sharp today. Uh, Gary Gate will, will manage it well. It'll be an opportunity for him, as he said, to, to hammer home some fundamentals. Because their schedule was so front-loaded, they did not practice, you know, they didn't have quality practice as much in the month of February. They're playing on like Wednesdays and Fridays and Tuesdays. It was just a little bit of a disjointed schedule. I, I think now the opportunity for them in April is to back up a second. They can work on their fundamentals, they can get fresh, and, and they also, I think it'll help in terms of player development. That is, freshmen and sophomores who are not seeing on a regular basis. Another turnover here for Syracuse. So Syracuse, Quint, has nine turnovers, and they are all caused turnovers by Notre Dame so far in this game. I mean, that, that's the first thing you notice when you, when you transition as a player from high school to college. The speed of the game, all the windows that, that you used to be able to operate in now suddenly grow smaller. You've got to make faster decisions. If you hesitate, 
you're usually lost. You got to have a plan in your head and then a plan B. And, and I think right now, this game's moving a little fast for some of these guys on Syracuse. Sam English, they feed around behind the net. 21st meeting of all time between these two. Not at a 10 apiece. Irish have won six in a row. It's a nice set so far, but Light does a great job against Joey Spelina. Light's a freshman, yes, 90 did. and White. Christian Mule has it. Yeah, the, the, dodging. It's not there. Now, the, the orange, it looks like this offense, again, you're seeing some wicked sticks, and these guys can shoot it and zing it around, but the ability for a party starter to blast by his man and draw double teams. Mule doesn't have that speed. Spelina doesn't have that speed. Hiltz doesn't have that speed. English. So you're going to be slow to double team. You're going to pack it in and be slow to double team. Oh, bouncer is through. Syracuse getting Michael Leo for their fifth goal of the day. It's a nice job offensively. They just pounded, pounded, pounded until Notre Dame splits because of fatigue, got tighter and tighter and tighter to the goal. And if there are three guys that the Orange need to be able to dodge today, it's going to be Michael Leo, Luke Roa, and Sam English. Wing dodge underneath, switches back to his left hand. And his ability to clear right there gives him enough angle, and he beats Entenmann. High release to a low shot. That's really nice. I, I, the three key guys to me on this offense today, again, Michael Leo, Luke Roa, Sam English. They got to get to the rack. And that was a big one, too, as the shot clock is winding down, and they converted, finally stopping a little bit of a run here. It was a 5-1 to one run for Notre Dame as they got up by four goals. Now it's back down to three, and the ball's in the stick of Chris Cavanaugh. Off the pick. Yeah, Duan's going to throw some lumber at you. 35, the lefty out of Loyola. He's only a sophomore. Pat Cavanaugh. Two goals today. And Grick, who has one as well. It's the second midfield group. As we said, they've, they've accounted for three goals so far. The guy who's been quiet has been Jake Taylor, their crease attackman. Now, what does that tell you? That means Notre Dame has been slow to support. They don't want to leave Taylor. And so they're holding on their double teams. And that's why Notre Dame scored unassisted goals. We're talking about number 13 there, Taylor for Notre Dame. But the shot there from Chris Cavanaugh, saved by Will Mark. A great stop by Mark. Six saves. Yeah, that, that's when he needed, okay? And, and that can trigger his hot streak. He comes into this game 71% over the last three games. He's been on fire. I had him on my podcast this week. What an amazing young man. Danville, California, went to prep school in New England, played at LIU, transfers to Syracuse, credits his dad, Chris. Uh, a likable, you got a chance, it's Lacks All-Stars. Uh, it's about 30 minutes. Will and I just talked like, like two goalies will. That's awesome. 840 saves in his career for Syracuse. Well, we were talking about how big this matchup is. What about next Sunday right here on the ACC Network? It is a rematch of the title game, Notre Dame and Duke. Coverage begins at noon Eastern. Should be awesome next Sunday right here on the ACC Network. And, of course, streaming live as always on the ESPN app. Duke with a win this week in, in the slop and in muddy conditions over BU. I'm excited. I'll be down in Durham for that. And there you see the series history. It's a rematch of last year's national championship game. You know, I, I think Duke obviously clearly has the talent. I, I don't think that's a question. I'm just waiting for them to take that next step. Their defense seems really strong and tight right now. Uh, they're, where they're struggling to me is in the midfield production. I uh, love their attack. Josh Shawada, Dyson Williams, and Brennan O'Neill have seen some rotations from their midfield and I'm just kind of waiting for them to take that next step yeah, and still there's plenty of time that's a cool thing Mike it's not even April yet you know and, I know. and so I, I I see people like handing out all American awards I I, I, I see people knighting and, and coronating teams and we're just getting started is anyone in to continue with what you're saying they're further along than somebody else per se is you as the calendar flips to April well I thought flipping back, I thought Johns Hopkins, Denver, 
and Army returning almost 100% of their teams. That's why they had so much success in February. But eventually, if you don't continue to improve, someone's going to really end. Someone's going to keep improving. And so far this season, you know, in my eyes, Kevin Corrigan and this Notre Dame team have been the best in the country. What, what they have showed in that Michigan win, the middle poor, I have not seen lacrosse played like that this season. Virginia's played in spurts. Duke's played in spurts. Syracuse clearly in spurts. But to me, the team to beat right now, you're looking at them, and they're, they're wearing white jerseys. Hopkins leading Michigan by four goals in the fourth quarter right now here as that's well a final. today. That, that's a final. Oh, final. Got it. 15-11, Hopkins wins. Army beats North Carolina by one with a comeback. Virginia beats Harvard up in Boston uh, after trailing by maybe four or five goals in that game. Furious comeback by the Cavaliers. Got to get my scoreboard updated there. Sorry, Q. Yeah, hit refresh. <laughs> I know. Should there's, do it there's more action today, Mike. There's 76 Division I teams. There's only one game tomorrow night, uh, Penn State and Maryland. So everybody else is playing today. There's never been a day in the history of Division I college lacrosse as populated with games as today is right now. Wow. That's pretty crazy. You, and you know what the biggest challenge is on a day like today? Getting quality to officials to all these sites. Oh, yes. There you because go. you've got so many games on one day. Two minutes, 45 seconds to go in the first half. Syracuse has been in this position a few times already today, down by three. They've Again, I'd like back. to see the ball. Mike behind the goal with some two-man games. Just plug in the Georgetown tape. The, the, the Hoyas dismantled this defense from behind the net. Going to struggle this quarter here. Good grounder by Conlin. He scoops that. He's got a medium tempo. He knows if he doesn't get to it, there's going to be Syracuse guys there. But he kind of had his head on a swivel, knowing that Sean Light mm -hmm. is an outlet. Notre Dame this quarter is two for 12 shooting as McLean brings it into the offensive end. And now with two minutes to go. The orange defense is vastly improved, really. John O'Darna, their DC, mm -hmm. has done a, a marvelous job. He's basically boiled it and simpled it, simplified the schemes here. They're playing better on the ball. Much more buttoned up in their double teams and their recovery patterns. Yeah, you had talked about it right from the start, and I feel like more of a balanced team this year. Of course, they struggled a little bit last year at the X. Now that's obviously better. Talk about how the defense has improved. That man down unit, which we've seen once today, but was scored on with the only extra man opportunity of the day by Notre Dame. They converted. Yeah, and so they're the net result is that they're four goals better this season defensively than they were a year ago. That's a ton. That's a ton. Uh, and, and you win with effort. And the way they ride, the way they scrap for ground balls, the way they understand that, you know, mistakes are going to come their way. They're going to turn it over a couple times. They're going to put the ball on the ground. But you know what? They're going to fight for it and get it back. Yeah, I, I thought you had a great point when you mentioned it going to break there, Q. And, and it's 22 to 13, by the way, and ground balls in favor of Notre Dame. But you had said it because they were riding, they were knocking the ball away, 50 and 51. You said, be like those guys. And you're absolutely right. because They've also caused nine turnovers. And then on the offensive end on cue, Chris Cavanaugh puts it through, and it's a 9-5 game. This is Chris from the right-handed wing. And this is a little bit of a sloppy, things go awry, let's say. Syracuse is going to challenge this goal. Pat Kavanaugh calls up left-handed and takes a shot. Ball squirts out. Shot clock looks like it's at zero when that ball was released. If that, in fact, is synced up. The challenge is a shot clock violation by Notre Dame. All right, there you go. Right side of your screen, there you go. Ball has to be released. Oh, that, that goal is good. I think he did, yeah. It's, that goal is good. Out. Has to be released before the zeros. So no challenge, and the goal is good. Yeah, great job, guys, of putting that together. It's 9-5 to five here. And oh, off the faceoff, Lynch. Will Lynch scores it.
four seconds. The most improved Fogo that I've seen in the country this year. The emotional maturity to ride the waves of success and failure. Remember, he ran first midfield at Chaminade in Long Island, one of the nation's premier private Catholic schools. And so he's a real cross player. He's become a Fogo in college. 50% last year, and now he's hovering around 65%. He, he is just putting it all together. Will Lynch. Second goal of the season. And that really hurts. I mean, you know, you're Syracuse, you're battling through, trying to keep this within striking distance, and then all of a sudden you give up two goals in four seconds. One as the shot clock was expiring, one off the faceoff win, and we're under a minute to go in the first half, and Notre Dame has the ball. That's got to be a record. Russ Lynn, our stat man, who's helping us today, pulling the greatest doubleheader in sports history. We'll, That's right. We'll bird dog that during halftime. Well, I can't imagine that about, Notre Dame has scored twice in faster than four seconds. I was going to say, you're, you're, he can look it up. Eight different goal scorers as well. That came from Russ in the uh, 10 goals that they've scored so far today. Five seconds left before halftime. And that is how the half is going to end up with Notre Dame doubling up Syracuse in a matchup of number one versus number three here. Hey, let's do better in faceoffs. Let's defend a little better. They. It's not like Notre Dame's defense is blowing me away here, Mike. Notre Dame's made right. some mistakes on defense. But their offense with 10, almost 11, the save there made by Will Mark. It's a shot. Great hustle, great hustle. Closest to the ball when it crosses that line is going to be awarded possession. Now, you can't be out of bounds. And that's what John Oderna there in the white sweater is arguing, that the Notre Dame player actually overran that and was out of bounds when the ball crossed the line. But the official had a good angle. He was in position. Irish 5-0 and and leading at the half. See Syracuse 1-1 and trailing so far this season. They've only had two losses, both in overtime. We talked about it. Number four, Maryland. Number five, Army. Here's Pat Cavanaugh. It's only the second real road game of the season with, if you will, true road game for Syracuse. Save again, Mark. Loose One ball in front. One-handed shot by Cavanaugh. Jake Taylor's been really silent. 13 in white, the crease attack one for Notre Dame, who just exploded two weeks ago against Michigan. He's being locked up with a shorty, and the Orange have been slow to double team and slide. And so he's been taken out of the equation. Just on the way here in the third. Yeah, here come the flags. Yeah, flags are down. This is a delayed offside call. There's only one extra man opportunity in that first half, and Notre Dame capitalized on it because of the three face-off violations for Syracuse. Been a pretty clean game, really. In front, scoring it, and Syracuse gets it with Sam English. Crazy level of skill on this possession. There's a, there's a catch here, a subtle bounce pass. Watch this catch. Watch this catch. Right there. Jam it inside, handling traffic. Th these guys have crazy skill. Syracuse offensively. The hand eye coordination, the passing skill, the unselfishness, it's there. It's there. They, they, can, they can light up a scoreboard. The question is, how do they get this Notre Dame defense in motion? You said about that pickup off the ground ball there and the assist. It was Finn Thompson that fed it to him. Great catch, right? He just makes that look easy. That's, yeah. a, that's a short hop. That's right. not easy. The ball comes out there with spin. Correct. He gets it in his pocket and seamlessly just dishes it. And that's what you get when you go out playing indoor lacrosse. There's just so many of those handle situations. And, and, and Q, knowing where you want to go with it right after you get it, too, right? I mean, he's, he already saw it. Gathered it. English on the doorstep, 10 to 6. See if the it's got to be on the defensive winning. end here. Yeah, let's see if they can start winning some of these battles on ball first. Oh, 
Faceoffs are 14 to 4 in favor of Notre Dame here. Angrick. And a one handed shot put in by Jake Taylor for Notre Dame. Look at that. This guy is, is nasty. Anger cleans in at the goal line. Taylor just steps down, <laughs> clamps the defender's stick under his arm, got away with a hold there. You watch him just put that left hand, takes control and custody of the stick and says, I don't need two hands. Now that I've neutralized your stick, I'm just going to use my right hand and a slam dunk. This should be a hold on the offensive player for clamping down on that defensive player's stick. Uh, agreed, Quinn. That's why I was like, why is he just using the one arm? <laughs> That's because the other one was being held up. And Taylor still scores it. That is now nine different goal scorers for Notre Dame in this game. Taylor's got 23 to lead the team in scoring, and it's back to a five goal lead. Can do that same maneuver on an inside roll move when you're in attack and you drive up. And the cross handed hold comes under your armpit. You can lock your elbow down and then you have that defender at your mercy yeah it looks like he's covering you and if you, if you don't do it obviously the refs aren't going to call that holding violation but if you can just pin it against yourself you really know where that stick is and it neutralizes the defender Pat Kavanaugh It's so tough to stay with him. That's the, like you said, that's the first order of business there. McLean gets it back to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh spent three and a half time gone by here. Top of the box today in their sets. And, and, you know, that's what makes Pat so dangerous. He can beat you from X. We saw it off the pick. He's got wing dodges from both sides right there with the swim. Oh, unbelievable. Back to Taylor. He scores it. You call the cue on the swim move, and then Taylor with two in a row on the assist from Kavanaugh. Like a chess piece that's dangerous in, in all the different locations. Swim move, draws the double team, trust is made inside. Taylor and Kavanaugh. This is the symbiotic relationship. Swim, inside, one touch, keep it simple. Pat continuing to pile on points against the Orange. That slide comes over. Right, Q, and, and they go away from Taylor. And Kavanaugh, he's, he's seen it all. He's like, boom, easy goal. Like, what can you do there? You got you to stay on Taylor and then let Pat beat you? I mean, it's, it's so tough. I, I like the way Chris Wojcik, their OC, is using him, too. But he, hidden ball, ball's near near with us in this box side. Yep, Edmonds all over. But like, I watch Duke, and it seems like O'Neal, Brennan O'Neal's not not as versatile in terms of it. That, he should be able to win matchups. Top of the box, wing, behind. And I just think Chris Wojcik's doing a nice job of putting Kavanaugh in different positions in different games to tax the defense. It's not always him. There's a good look at Woj. It's not always Kavanaugh coming up left-handed from behind the net, you know? And, and so I think that offers a lot of variety that makes it difficult to prepare for this team. That's a great point. Wojcik in his fifth season. Along with Ryan we Welner, play, also in his fifth year. You know, in basketball, we just run the same play, but we do it from the right wing, and then we do the same play from mm -hmm. the left wing. Or we can even tilt it and, 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 and turn it like a dial and run the same play with, with him initiating from up top. It just looks different, but it's the same stuff. Riley Gray's and been Notre Dame. Today, huh? 17 yeah. and white. You know, Jordan Faison's been a little quiet, and I wonder if it, this time of year is going to be rough on him because he's he's doubling up with, with the football team during spring practice and lacrosse. they are going to meetings for football, trying to learn their new te terminology. Mark of the save here. Well, Mark with the save. So we haven't seen as much of 14 and white as, as we have in prior weeks. He, he's been elected. They have some new offensive coaches on the football side. And so they're asking him not to participate in practice, but to just stay along with the building of the playbook, the terminology, the installation of the plays. And so when he joins the team at the end of lacrosse season in June, 
he's not like a month behind. The slot receiver, right, for Notre Dame? Yeah. Football? Yeah. Yeah, Sam Hart, yeah, the quarterback from last year, told me he was their best receiver at the end of last year. He's the MVP of the Sun Bowl with five catches. They've got some uh, exciting wide receiver recruits now in, 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 the, in, the, in the next class. I can only imagine that. Your first year, you're, you're a freshman, you're playing football, you're playing lacrosse, you get studies, you're at Notre Dame, okay, by the way. So, I mean, boy, that's... Super impressive for number 14 that we're talking about there, Jordan Faison. Yeah, this I, I, I just have the feeling that this spring portion it will be a little taxing for him, and then he'll catch kind of a second wind in May. What do you think, though, in terms of getting a considerable amount of time, though, on the field, right? Cue to kind of be involved in the action, and I just. Well, it's just a lot, you know, it's just a lot for any student athlete. You're balancing, as you said, you're balancing academics, one sport's enough, plus the weightlifting and the film, and then you're adding a second. You know, it's, it's like trying to take seven courses like I did as a senior to try to graduate on time. You're just, you're just <laughs> <laughs> overwhelmed. How'd you put yourself so in like, that position? But, uh, you know, <laughs> saw it coming, but I don't know. It was my best academic semester, too. That's the funny thing. Sean Light, 90. Me, too. He's doing a great job. Sean Light's doing a great job against uh, Spelina. I improved every semester in college. I know, you do better as a junior and a senior because you, you know do. how to study, you know how to listen, you know how to take notes. Here's Chris Cavanaugh. Pass up top of falling down, but able to knock it over was Dobson. Got it to Richie Ardelli. Here's Jordan. He's being covered now by Nathan Levine. So here he is. Gets the switch. Face on. Passes it up. Shot save Mark that time from the claim. They offer him. Good angle play by Will Mark. He's big. He's six foot four. I love him. I think he's one of the top five goalies in the country. Coming off a, a three-game stretch where he's just on fire. 71% over the last three games. A lot of that, you know, his defense keeping guys in the perimeter. He's battle tested too, Mike. Yeah, he, Mark he's has, got a Will lot Mark of saves. LIU, yeah, LIU and Syracuse. He has seen tons of shots in his career. That's asking a lot, obviously, coming in here against a team that averages 17 goals a game. I was going to ask you, Mike. it's like, well, Nice play there. Yeah, good sticks by I mean. Conlin. Good scoop by Bergmaster. No, I think in terms of being a senior goalie or a fifth-year senior goalie, you really got to watch your reps in practice because more is not necessarily better. And so typically, early in your career as a freshman and sophomore, you want to see a lot of reps. You got to get up to speed with college shooters. And then once you get your feet comfortable later in your career, it's about shorter warm-ups, but more intense, more game-like. And so you're trying to simulate game shots. That is shots on the move, shots off of ball movement, inside shots. And so you're going a little shorter to stay fresh, but challenge yourself, play it like it's a game. Where's the issue in this game uh, lie on here if you're Syracuse? Because you can't put it on Mark. I mean, he's had an incredible year. I know he's given up 12 goals here today, but you had to come in, you knew you had to come in scoring goals today for Syracuse, right? Yeah, like, I, 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 mean. I, I I just, I think when you're attacking Notre Dame, you got to get the ball behind the goal, and I just haven't seen enough of that. They're, all of a sudden, they're starting to play a little better defense. So There's the shooting for Notre Dame has been relentless. The shot differential in this game is crazy. Totally. 40 to 19 in favor of the Irish. Way too much there as Riley Gray who scored the first two goals, 17 and white for Notre Dame. It's going to be scooped up by Mark. It's a nice D on the inside. They collapse. Look, this group has improved dramatically. Nine and two, RPI around five or six right now if you're Syracuse. You gotta, you gotta think, you gotta hold serve against North Carolina in the ACC, and then I think you're gonna get into the NCAA tournament now. Your seeding's gonna be dependent on, let's say this game, Tuesday's game is huge. You're playing Cornell on Tuesday in Ithaca. It's a tough turnaround. Thankfully, they got a charter, so they'll be out of South Bend so fast your head would spin. <laughs> 
That's what you got to do here. There are three games left in the regular season for Syracuse. I mean, that, that, and it's March 30th, right? We're getting to April, yeah, but crazy. crazy at Cornell, as you said, on the second, at North Carolina on April 13th, and home against Virginia on the 20th. That's it. Yeah, they're holding the Duke win, which is huge. But keep it going now, and you put yourself in position to make some noise in that bracket. 10 to 4 win back on March 20th. It's Mule. Syracuse, 15 to shoot. It's going to be a crease violation. Crease, yeah. Um, I, I, my guess is he got pushed in by a Notre Dame defender. So you got the hold, Christian Alakwa. A talented young player, one of their defensive midfielders. It's one area that Notre Dame is going to have to start playing more guys. I thought it caught up to them against Georgetown. They played Ramsey and Parlett until those guys couldn't breathe and run. They got Alakwa, they got Danny Parker, they got Tyler Buckner. Owen Hiltz fires it through here for Syracuse. It feels as if Notre Dame's trying to pull away, but the Orange won't give, give it up yet. And this extra man goal goes a long way to keeping this game competitive. PLL College Draft, May 7th, 7 o'clock p.m. We'll have it for you on ESPNU. I'm having uh, lunch with Brian Holman, head of the Boston Cannons, later on in the week just to chat. It's there always interesting, always interesting to, to get the pro's view, whether it's an Andy Towers, uh, Jim Stagnita, Chris Bates, or Coach Holman as, as they watch games and go to practices. Bill Tierney, a huge announcement this week. Bill Tierney is going to be coaching the Philadelphia Water Dogs. You talk about validation, like your college fans that, that I see, and, and, they, and they say, oh, I don't want to watch uh, the PLL. You got Bill Tierney now coaching in the PLL. What more validation right. do you need? Like, come on, people, jump aboard. It's really good lacrosse. It's a lot yeah, of fun. One, one of the you best see something, I see something every week in that league that blows my mind. It's Bill really it's pushing 71 the game. Seventy-one years old. Yes. It's pushing the game. It's pushing innovation. It's pushing what athletes can do on the field at all positions. And how about another goal for Notre Dame? Jordan Faison, who we were talking about. He's been entered here into the third quarter, and it didn't take him long. He puts one through his 14th of the season. Most of the work I've seen Jordan do has been in front of the goal. He takes this restart. Turbo off the pick. See you later. Severe angle shooting left-handed. He, he's just continuing to to build his his resume, so to speak. The skill sets we're seeing on a weekly basis, just more and more and more from a dodging, passing, and scoring standpoint. He, he is a weapon. To me, he's one of the reasons why this offense has taken a giant step forward this season. Party starter supreme. Automatic double team. You got to send it to Jordan. I don't know how you cover this team, Quint. They've had 13 goals by 10 different goal scorers, and they're doing it against number three, Syracuse. They're up six. Well, it's, you know, heads it's, up. It's, it's, it's been good. And, and you wonder why the people are packing, packing the grassy knoll to come watch it, because it's a lot of fun. They're the All team to beat, years. no doubt. As March comes to a close there, I, at the beginning of the year, I honestly, I said Duke and Notre Dame, there's a good chance we could see a rematch. Well, Duke hasn't quite uh, matured the way I expected it to. Notre Dame has. Notre Dame has been everything that has been advertised. They supplemented this roster with some great graduate transfers. Their young players, their new faces have been outstanding. And, and, and they're playing an ex exciting brand of lacrosse. And, and that's why this place is wall to wall. We just saw it. I mean, it is an incredible crowd today at our Lotta Stadium. 
Sun shining here from South Bend. And the Irish who've been knocking on the door for so many years, right? And they finally break through last year, the national title, and a save here by Antamin and goal. And that player this down for good. Chris Conlin. Yeah, Chris yeah. Conlin, yeah. Chris Conlin had an investment banking job this fall and came back to school. Came back to school as a grad student. That's good to see him back on his feet. He's played a strong game today. Holy Cross transfer, New Jersey native. Defense went right back up. It's good to see his right. And we're just 221 to go in the third. Notre Dame hanging on to this six goal lead. He, yeah. There's the wide shot from the far side of the field that looks towards the football stadium and the indoor facility. And Conlin, the real world can wait. I, I, I want to I want to yeah. put on face paint every Saturdays and go have fun. I don't blame him. I mean, this team with a chance for back to back national championships after all those years. Getting so close, and you know, you see this place packed, and yeah, they're only going to have one more opportunity here at home you know, to watch this team. And that's April 20th when they take on UNC. Good movement here by Syracuse, nice clear. Still time in this game, and they got to get something going back to back. They've struggled face-offs. That has not helped. 16 to 6 in favor of Notre Dame. They're moving a little bit more of a sense of urgency, and they're one for their last 10 shooting. Roa. It's off and backed up. Christian Mule will put it back in. Minute 10 to play in this third quarter. Three to two scoring in the third in favor of Notre Dame. It's a 10 to five game at halftime. Trying to get it down low there. Now it's loose and it's picked up by the Irish. Great grounder and good circle by Antiman. Collins in trouble. He too gets away from it. Really nice play by Antiman. Was decisive, saw the ball on the ground, said, I can get there. And do I have an exit route? Yes, I do. Runs to safety and makes the play. It's where his game has improved dramatically over, the, over his career. Corey, he used to be kind of hesitant around the goal, scary outlet passes. Now, now he's, he's dishing it from back there. What do you think about the uh, evolution? Well, this is, right this is trouble. This is trouble. Let's see here if Syracuse gets something going here with the final 15 seconds of this quarter. It'd be big if they can put one through behind the back pass in front. I don't know if that's wow. what you needed. Yeah, and I, it's I know there's not much time left, but but please. Yeah. Do you want to win? You want to win championships, or, or do you want to be, become uh, popular on, on on Twitter and Instagram? Don't need that. Down six, and that's how the third quarter is going to end up. Notre Dame leading 13 to seven. We'll be back fourth quarter from South Bend after this. Awesome, and the uh, number two Virginia moves. There's not much cross pollination uh, between leagues now as league play has started across the country. That's why Tuesday's game, Syracuse at Cornell, is so important when you think about impacting the RPI. Look at the ACC. It looks like everybody outside of Carolina is in position to make the NCAA tournament. Still work to be done, but that's in the direction that it's headed. Fourth quarter is underway here. Yeah, Big Ten has had a strong season, and uh, mm -hmm. and the Ivies they're, they're putting up goals. The Ivy League has some really fun offenses to watch. Bounce shot. Mule will put it back in here for Syracuse. Mm -hmm. 
one for their last 12 now shooting. It's a nice little one set play there. It's wing to wing, there's a down pick set, and then Hiltz pops left-handed for that shot. It's a good set play. Thinking quality of shots too as well. Clint, that one, that one's better. And it's saved from going in by Intamin. Yeah, memories of last year's game up in the dome where Intamin had the ball on his stick and then the ball went across the goal line. It's not a loose ball, so it was no goal. And the game spun in a completely different direction with Notre Dame scoring nine straight goals. Intamin's got some some magic tricks on that goal line. Yes, six saves, couldn't get that one though. And finally, Syracuse. Thompson puts it through. It's been forever, it feels like, since they've scored one here. It's back to a five goal game. Notre Dame hasn't put this game away yet, and so you gotta be careful. This is a, a, a great offensive possession. Mule draws a double team from the wing. Not sure you wanna go there. I don't, Mule's dodging left-handed to no angle. And Notre Dame sends the double team wide. Two and two and orange is not a threat to beat your goalie there. His angle is decreasing. And that's a bad slide, and bad slides get punished. Thompson from point blank range. Yeah, just a second goal in the last 15 minutes. For they're Syracuse. hanging around though. Like they're they hanging are. around. Notre Dame has not been able to just put them away entirely. So. I was going to say another area that was has been troubling for them here is with 16 turnovers. But then you look at the other side, Notre Dame's got 15, but they're leading by five. It's just other facets of this game in terms of ground balls and faceoffs. One, they're a plus 12 in that department today, and timely goals too. One is the shot clock was expiring. They got one off the faceoff that took four seconds. They had back-to-back -back goals, scored in 39 seconds. They've had some good runs here. Here's a save by Will Mark. Really well tracked. Mark tracking that pass, and so, so he's ready, locked in and seeing the ball as it hits Devin McLean's stick. You, you don't want to turn with the pass. You have to turn ahead of the pass. So that McLean catches it, boom, you're ready. And he was. Well, it's his 13th save so far here. Can Syracuse capitalize in front? They do. Score it. And that time it's Spolina, who we were just talking about during the break. He only had three shots up to this point, and his fourth one is his first goal of the game. Yeah, this is, again, uh, Kevin Corrigan might have to call timeout here because this team has kind of been a little bit of a funk here. And this game's not far from over. Okay, that's a slow break in transition where Orange is, they, they've been really efficient this year in that category. Great look, Spolina with the layup. Stop on defense, and all of a sudden it's a four goal game. We got 12 minutes right. to play, folks. Quinn, kind of feast or famine here with Syracuse uh, scoring today. They had two goals in 15 minutes. Well, they just scored two goals in 55 seconds. And the faceoff violation. Here they come now, they're, and their bench is perked up. They haven't gone away, and their, their defense in the second half has been much better. They've only given up three goals since halftime. This is big right now. They score again, you're going to see a timeout Notre Dame. I agree with you on that. Thought we might have just saw one here before this, but Steven shoots, it's not there. And it'll be Christian Mule to put it back in. Off the pick. Cross field for Roa. Roa shoots. He scores. Luke Roa. Syracuse mounting the comeback. Their bench is fired up for good reason. It's a three goal game. Effective skip pass. Boom, right there. I think it's Muley. Parlett's a bit caught on his heels, and so Roe is able to run at him. Catch, run at him, plant with the left foot, work to the middle of the field where your angle is much better. Again, left to right, boom. Sidearm shot back to the near post. 
What has got it to the Orange now? Three goals, three straight in a minute and 33, but a faceoff won by Will Lynch. Good job to break it up. Important possession now. You got to get the ball to, to your studs. You got to get the ball to Pat Kavanaugh, 51. I'd like to see Dobson or Faison from the midfield. They come out with the second group. Wow, that's a show of confidence in the second midfield group. You talk about importance. How about if Syracuse can get a stop here? Get this ball back with a three goal run in progress. Gray. Riley Gray shoots over the top of the net there. And he was the guy that scored the first two goals of this game today off that second midfield line, Quint. They got Notre Dame going. Very aggressive today. Pat Cavanaugh. Steck is on the turf. It's going over to Hughes. Yeah. Great check, and then Taylor continues to play without the stick in his hands, and, and, and that is, uh, that's illegal, and so you have the turnover. Cuse is emboldened. Give them credit. They fought back. I love their energy right now. You feel a little confidence surging? Notre Dame's well, going to have to dig in to get this, get this game won. For sure. Both teams have really done a nice job of, you know, getting their sticks in there, causing some turnovers. I mean, that's 10 cost turnovers by Syracuse. There have been 11 by Notre Dame. Finn Thompson swings it up for Sam English. Here comes a flag. Multiple ones. This is big as the Orange will go on the man up here. Spolina's got it. Still kept alive here, Mule. Penalty coming up on the Irish, English. Yeah, no need to force it. And that's going to be picked up by Notre Dame. And here comes the penalty call. Seems like the Orange have had some success now with some high wing dodges. Each team one for one on the extra man today. So Second opportunity coming up for Gary Gates' squad. As soon as we get the official call, 9.57 to go here in the contest. Jeff Ricciardelli with the yeah, cross one check. Stand, one minute standard time by Angrick right there. They could get him for a... They could get him for direct contact to the head and neck area uh, yep. and make that non-releasable. Yeah, 1-0, Angrick, number 10 with the cross check. So Syracuse here, 50 seconds behind the back pass. It's back over to the stick of Spolina. Working up top, back down low, extra pass. Oh, what a oh save. my That's a... gosh. Was that a save? Syracuse still has it here, Burt Whistle. Nice hustle by the Orange to fight for that ball back. Just ball run, is not on down. Line. Just run, good play. That save though, man. He's made a couple magical saves this season, but that one takes the cake. We'll show it to you. White made the play though, as you said, defensively, number 90 for Notre Dame. Stopping the extra man opportunity for the Orange. Which is going to expire. And we're back to full strength here. The Irish are. Liam Entenman, the grad student out of Chaminade, Long Island. Product of the Massapequa Mud Dog Rec Program. Another flag. He has found that, that level first point. Play. That calm mind, but what we've seen is never quit, never give up, never quit. Dive right across the goal, boom, gets a stick on it, pipe to pipe. 
You got one chance to make this. You may as well sell out. He turns, pivots, sell out. Incredible, incredible save by Antiman. That was awesome. Just and not going to quit. Right. Just not going to quit. In his mind, he can make every save. See if that can light a spark under a, a Notre Dame team that's quite honestly been pretty flat here in the second half. Yeah, they do need to pick it up. They've given up the fewest amount of goals per game with 8.33. So far, 10 on the board today for Syracuse. Extra man here for the Irish. Junkyard 40 seconds dogs to go. Press, pressing out to Pat Cavanaugh at 51. It's going to be Taylor. Got here. Taylor's glove fell off and he had the ball on his stick. Lost his glove, yep. Twenty five seconds left. Extra man. Kavanaugh's working it back and forth between each other. Chris shoots and that is off. Great defense, great defense. These guys are moving their feet, the sticks are up in the passing lane, they're attacking shooters, they're getting in their vision, getting to their hands, getting to their feet, they're moving. Junkyard dogs, here they are off the bench, all five of them. Yeah, the man down defense working well here. Once again, though, they'll have it back Notre Dame with four seconds to go. They're 0 for 4 shooting in this fourth quarter. Now the problem with the junkyard dogs is after these penalties. That's what I was gonna ask you about. Like, they're gonna, they get well, they get the shot clock violation to their credit. Now, the, the challenge with the junkyard dogs is after penalties, let's say Notre Dame controlled there, and then all of a sudden Notre Dame's feasting on some of these matchups. And yes. this, can the junkyard dogs clear? So it's not as easy as just rolling them out there to play man down defense. Okay, penalties end, and you've got to clear it once you put the ball on the carpet. And now Notre Dame's going to have some favorable matchups. If you're Notre Dame, you want to isolate some of these guys who are on this junkyard dog team. These are second and third liners. This is something I mean, you hope to have gone over during the week. Yeah, in terms of, you know, preventing goals in those situations, they've only given up two man down goals in the last seven games, and then they gave up one here today. So they have been doing a great job, like you said, after him. What happens there? What happens here is a goal scored by Eric Dobson for Notre Dame and puts him back up four. Big time smoke from Dobson, left-handed with his feet set, staring the goalie down, but that's all about the ride. Everything in South Bend starts with effort. It starts with grit, it starts with hustle. They're gonna chase you down. They earn the restart, they earn possession, and then it's Dobson, flamethrower. Irish up by four. That was so big, that last one he just put in. Syracuse had those three in a row goals that you just saw in a minute and 33 seconds. But then that big one from Dobson. What does the Orange have here? Opportunity to cut it right back to three. Another save from Edson on the shot that time from Burton Whistle. Players going down all over the place. 14th save. I tell you, City Lax has been raising money off of uh, Kavanaugh ground balls. Every ground ball, the Kavanaugh's donating $10 to City Lax. City Locks needs to deal with Liam Entman for saves. Eamon McEnany, former Fighting yep. Irish defender. Spearheading City Locks, which is a great initiative. Using lacrosse to teach life lessons and open up opportunities for young people. Not the time for Notre Dame to take their foot off the gas, but it is the time for them to kind of really manage 
clock and score, okay? To work a, a bit into the shot clock, continuing to attack, but understanding. That's a good point. They can bring it down to around the 430 mark or so, 35, depending on when they put, put a shot on here as Kavanaugh controls it, Chris Kavanaugh. 13 saves for Will Mark today in goal for Syracuse. It's eight saves for Liam Entman for Notre Dame. And we just saw the amazing one that he had just a few minutes ago. Here they come, and the ball shot from behind that time, and the shot phase on. Where's that chin strap up around his mouth? It's kind of awkward. It's Pat Kavanaugh. Shot clock's at 15. Chris Kavanaugh, save Mark. That is his 14th of the day. Yeah, a beautiful stop. The hand-eye coordination, the top strong hand. You know, that right hand is, is your power hand as a goaltender. Will's big, he fills up the net. He's got a wide base. He likes to flop. That time he stayed honest and true. He saw it and makes the move. Oh, it's Syracuse. They are not done. That goal scored by Jake Stevens. Right back to a three goal game here. A lot of trust. A lot of trust in Stevens as a two way guy. Look, Stevens says throw it down, and then he cuts the crease a little. Lacrosse is a visual game. He presents the target, and the, and the ball is on the money. Transfer to Princeton. Yeah, he's been dealing with something now throughout the season. He played a lot of games at Princeton, 50 games at Princeton. His value is as a, as a two-way midi. He can play wings on face-offs. He's a great defender. Looks like he's dealing with an injury now. Mm -hmm. Well, here we go. If, if, if you're the Syracuse defense, you make a stop here, you're going to be, you know, as long as it's the margin is like, say, three goals, as long as you have three minutes, you're in good shape. Two goals, two minutes. Four goals, four minutes. So there's still a lot of hope here. Each team has both of their timeouts remaining with four minutes even to go in the contest. Ball knocked around. Let's see if you can get it. It's Notre Dame. They've got it back. And the 340 remaining in the contest. Shot clock down to 30. And stick check there on the shot from Angrick. Twenty-seven seconds to shoot. Listen, Kel. Over to Pat Kavanaugh. Ten left. And balance the field here late in the shot clock. Kavanaugh in front, behind the back there on the shot. This is going to be Syracuse possession with Good three D. minutes and eight seconds to go. Good D now, an important clear. Orange have two timeouts. Notre Dame has kind of left this door open here a little bit. This second half shooting their four of 20. And Syracuse has closed the gap. They're going to call a timeout to talk it over with two minutes and 54 seconds remaining and down three. Okay, so here we go. 254 left. Sam English will start it off for Syracuse down three. Being marked by Ben Ramsey. Michael Leo's got it, gets a step, takes it in. Leo shoots, he scores! Just like that. Took him only 11 seconds after the timeout. And Michael Leo has made it a two-goal game. I loves his left hand. He just catches this up by the top of the box and runs straight downhill. Defender is trailing him a bit, and he gets his hands free, and there's no double team. Notre Dame very hesitant to slide to one of their poles. So the Orange run the weave up top, 
create an advantage. Leo with a good burst of speed. Couldn't have asked for anything better coming out of that timeout. Now they win the faceoff where they have not been good today. They were 20 to 8, but getting them at the crucial times, and this obviously being one of them with two and a half to go. And the ball with a two goal deficit. Spalina, Joey Spalina's got it for English. Oh, it was Trying there. to go down low it there. Was there. Yeah. I tell you, Notre Dame's defense, if you break down the Michigan game and you break this game down, there's some mistakes, and they're being cleaned up by Liam Entman. And sometimes as a, as a team defense, you don't really realize it, but, like, let's not forget the diving save. Let's not forget a couple of those other saves. This defensive effort has not been up to par for Notre Dame, especially in the second half. 20 turnovers by Syracuse. There have been 17, though, by Notre Dame. And then what about defensively here? Quinn, now you got to press out. Thing? Now you yeah. got to press out. Oh, I, I, I do not like that possession at all for Notre Dame. What are you doing? Really don't reason 50, for that. It was 50 seconds yeah. on the shot clock. Could he use way more time instead? Syracuse back the other way, and they didn't have anybody there for the backup. Crucial mistakes here down the stretch, really three in a row. They're on a bad pass. Notre Dame shooting when they didn't have to. And then this shot going on, Quinn. Nobody was there to back it up. Entman surveying. And that's got to be a hold. That's going to be big. Now you press out. And Notre Dame is ultimately going to go on a on a power play differential in the clocks. What is it, Mike? Four seconds. Five seconds. Yeah. Five seconds. McLean. There comes another flag. Cross checking. Frustration. It's going to be tough now. Yeah, I mean, you want to get the ball back. I mean, but. Notre Dame just has to play keep away here. Like you said, it's a five second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. And even when Syracuse gets it, it's going to be Notre Dame balls. There's been multiple flags thrown, and the Phazon. Irish. Showing off his agility. Pat Cavanaugh. going to pay the price. Let me tell you, he's going to pay the price going in there. These two teams do not like now, each yeah. other. They do not like each other. And if you're Cavanaugh, you got to know that that's coming. If the Orange fought, I give them a lot of credit for the effort that we saw in the second half. The game got away from them in the end of the first and the second quarter. Down 10 to 5 after this game being tied at 3 apiece. Multiple penalties against Syracuse and I think one against Notre Dame. Ooh, three penalties all in the orange. I thought they might get a uh, Notre Dame player after the whistle. Well, at this point, just 60 seconds to go, Notre Dame. Gonna get seven in a row over Syracuse. Well, Kevin Corrigan will just hold this ball out. Now, if they come out and start swinging their sticks at you, we're gonna throw the ball in the empty net. You can back off. If you want to challenge us, fine. We're, 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 we're going for goal 15 if you do. It's an empty net right now. Chris Kavanaugh. Ten seconds left. And Notre Dame with a huge crowd here today on this final Saturday in March. Charlotte Stadium, they witnessed a 14-12 win for the Fighting Irish over number three Syracuse. They approved a 6-1 on the campaign.